How's it going everybody? Jared back once again and in this video we're going to be doing our final review of the LG Optimus G. Let's go ahead and take a look. So LG has really kicked it up a notch with the LG Optimus G. Um, comparing it to previous LG devices earlier this year, um, I am extremely impressed and surprised with, with uh, what they've done with this device. Now, size-wise, we're looking at 131.9 by 68.9 by 8.45 millimeters thin. It weighs a very respectable 141 grams, features a 4.7 inch true IPS plus display, raking in at 1280 by 768 resolution with a pixel density of 320. It features a 1.3 megapixel fixed focus camera capable of recording 720p on the front and an 8 megapixel camera on the back capable of recording in full 1080p. Unfortunately, here in North America, we don't get the 13 megapixel camera featured in the international versions, but 8 megapixels is more than adequate to get the job done. On the top of the device, we feature a 3.5 millimeter headphones jack, as well as our little pinhole noise cancellation microphone. On the bottom of the device, we actually feature two little screws that kind of add to the style, if you will, in my opinion anyways, as well as a micro USB uh, port that also doubles as an MHL adapter that'll allow you to mirror onto your television with an MHL adapter, uh, as well as our microphone at the bottom. On the left side of the device, we feature our volume rockers, as well as the micro SIM slot with your little pinhole there. And uh, don't worry, the device will come with a uh, micro SIM ejector pin. On the right side of the device, we feature nothing except for the power button. Looking again at the back of the device, you can see their little um, crystal process there with their kind of like under glass texture look to it. Um, I think it kind of adds to the look of the phone and I think it's pretty neat. Some people like it, some people don't. It's all up to user preference. Now what's powering this beast is a massive Qualcomm Quad Core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor clocked in at 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, that's also accompanied by the Adreno 320 GPU, which is three times faster than its predecessor, as well as two gigabytes of RAM. Now, What's powering all of that is going to be the 2100 milliamp battery. The device also comes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage, um, which is non-removable as well as the non-removable battery. Um, I don't know whether or not it's going to be coming out with a 64 gigabyte version. LG has yet to be, get to uh, get back to me on that one, but uh, I guess time will tell. And like many manufacturers, LG's also ditched the... Um, actual hard physical buttons on the front uh, and replace them with the capacitive buttons. You've got your back, you've got your home button as well as your menu button. Now let's go ahead and talk about software, shall we? So LG has really come a long way in the coming years and um, definitely that shows in its UI. Now I'm not 100% sure on what the actual official name is of the UI. LG has yet to get back to me on that one unfortunately and haven't been able to find it anywhere on the internet. If your Google skills are better than mine, let me know in the comments below. But there are some things in here that are a bit familiar that I wish they would have kind of done a little bit more uniqueness on. Um, there's a lot of nature styled theming going on throughout the device. And much like another manufacturer, which I'll let you use your imagination on, it was a bit disappointing to see that they kind of went with the nature theme as well. But nevertheless, I'm not complaining because I do like nature. Um, the actual UI itself has been really, really smooth and fluid. Um, I do have some issues with the sort of condensed menus. Um, it seems that there's a lot of situations where there's menus inside of menus inside of menus in order to achieve certain settings that you do want. However, if you do familiarize yourself with the device, I think you won't have too much of an issue with it. Um, you'll notice that we do have some different styled effects going on here. These can actually be changed around quite a bit if we hit the uh, menu button, jump into uh, home screen settings, and we actually have um, some different swipe effects. Now, if we wanted to, we can che uh, check out the different swipe effects by simply tapping on them. Them, and it'll show you what it's going to look like on your on your home screen, um, depending on the particular um, you know swipe effect that you decided to choose. So I thought that was kind of neat. And we've got a bunch of different um, settings in here as well, as well as different themes that it comes with. Uh, for at the moment, you've got Optimus, Biz, Cozy Wool, and Marshmallow. 
Jumping into the applications tray here, we also have some customizable settings in here as well. Uh, go ahead and actually what we'll do is you'll take a look here and you'll notice that we've got all apps. So you've got the uh, segregation between all apps, downloads, as well as your widgets. And um, no, you'll notice that they, it's not uh, scrollable into you know your downloads or applications. Um, but with that said, we do have some settings like I mentioned before. You'll notice here that we've got a lot of different um, uh, icons in the home screen and that is actually because you can actually hit the menu button while in here and click show large icons click OK and that'll bring up some bigger icons just in case you do have trouble seeing or maybe you just prefer larger icons but if you do decide to you can go ahead and click back to select the small icons to fit more icons on the on the uh, pages meaning less um, page flipping throughing stuff uh, moving on from there, we do have the option to go ahead and click the little settings button there and you'll notice as we scroll through here, we have a bunch of different um, applications that actually have little X buttons over them. Going ahead to click the X button will actually remove the application and uninstall it. And furthermore, you can actually, if you wanted to, take any application icon you want, drag it to the next screen and put it there and arrange it anywhere you want, which was pretty cool. To further the um, customized experience throughout the UI, you also have um, apps wallpaper. So you'll notice that I actually had this one um, I'm using, but you can actually choose from a bunch of different ones. Unfortunately, unfortunately, at this point in time, it doesn't look like you're able to select your own wallpapers from the gallery, um, but it's not the end of the world. One really cool feature that LG has been doing a lot of promoting of lately, and for good reason actually, is their quick memo function. Quick memo actually acts as a bit of a screen grabber that actually lets you draw on the screen, if you will, um, right away, instead of actually taking a screenshot, going into some sort of editing program, and then um, you know drawing on it from that point. Now, where this comes in handy is, let's say, for instance, a situation like this. You're on a phone call with Bob. Bob's letting you know a phone number that you're going to need to dial later on, but you don't have a pen or a piece of paper handy, and you know you obviously don't want to forget that phone number and have to call Bob back and get him to send it to you or text it to you or whatever. So you go ahead, bring down the notification panel, and go into your toggles. You'll notice Quick Memo is right there. This brings up the feature. From that point on, you can go ahead and PS. Drawing on a screen behind a camera is extremely difficult, but he starts listing out the phone number. So you start writing down 555 five, 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 five. All right, cool. Now, what do you do with that? Uh, especially since you're still in the function there. Go ahead and click that button there, and it brings you out of it. Uh, from this point on, you can start using the dialer if you will you can go to any screen you want any application you want and that stays on the screen for you you can also um, afterwards you can edit it you can change things like the um, thickness of it the color and so on uh, you can delete it by um, you can either do that and use your finger to scrub it out or tap it again for clear all and of course you can either save it um, or discard it if you like which I thought was a extremely useful function pulling down the notification tray reveals all the different toggles that LG has packed into the device uh, you've got quick memo NFC data sound eco mode Bluetooth GPS Wi-Fi brightness sync hotspot rotation Miracast which we'll get to in a moment power save and airplane mode and furthermore yes you can actually customize the arrangement but not only the arrangement, you can actually add or remove as many as you want, which I thought was a really great feature, something that Samsung is definitely lacking. Now, as far as home screen customization is concerned, uh, you go ahead and click on edit home screens. You can rearrange the home screens. You can add up to set uh, up to seven if you'd like, and you can just, um, you can actually choose which particular home screen you want as your default. Not all um, launchers let you do that. Furthermore, long pressing on a screen will actually bring up some more further customization options. You've got the choice between uh, different applications you can use. You can go into the downloads just like you did in the uh, application tray widgets, as well as wallpapers right from the home screen itself, which is pretty darn neat. Some other cool features that I did want to bring up um, is the messaging application. Now, as you can see here, I already kind of have a little test message set up, and you'll notice that the background is a lot different than what you would notice on a lot of stock messaging applications. 
applications. Uh, so in order to change that around, you just hit the menu button while you're in a message, go ahead and click on change skin, and you've got a different couple of different skins you can choose from. And again, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're able to um, add our own customized background to it. Nevertheless, we do have some different options here we can choose from. As you can see, I decided to go with the paper one, um, but there's just a couple of more if you do decide to go with those, which is pretty cool. Now, while we're still in here, you'll notice that we can actually, ah, yes, zoom in on text. Depending on the skin you're using, it may show up a little bit easier on your eyes. Uh, nevertheless, not only does it bring up the text in the actual um, string, but it actually brings it up in the, in the uh, actual text field as well, which I thought was a really, really cool feature. And of course, you can also access the dialer to call that particular contact right in the top right hand corner there, which is always a nice convenient function. Now, the video um, options here are equally as cool as some of the other customizations. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about the display quality when playing videos. Um, because this is using the new 1280 by 768 with a three P, uh, 320 PPI pixel density and the um, LG's IPS uh, True HD Plus display, um, it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, video streaming both in Netflix as well as watching just video files in itself are really, really impressive. That RGB subpixel matrix is just absolutely phenomenal. I can't say enough good things about it. In fact, it's so good that I actually sent an email to my contact at LG expressing um, my amaze with the display. Some of you may have different opinions on the display and that's totally okay, but in my opinion, it is probably the nicest display on a mobile device I've ever seen and arguably one of the best displays on a mobile device on the market today. One of the best anyways. Uh, but anyways, moving on from there, we've got some pretty cool video settings. Let's say for instance you're watching a video and now this does only work unfortunately on video files that you put on your phone. No, it won't work with video streaming, Netflix, wherever uh, other websites you use to um, watch videos from but if you do have the video file on your phone you can do really neat things like pinch to zoom or pinch out to zoom up to five times which is cool um, I thought that would be kind of an interesting feature if say for instance you are oh I don't know watching a movie and you saw a pretty funny scene maybe you caught the actor with a funny looking face go ahead pause it um, you know, zoom in on the particular person, take a screenshot, and then you can use um, Quick Memo to, you know, jot some stuff down, or you can even use Quick Memo to take that picture and, you know, s circle him or write some captions on it or something funny like that. That's pretty much the only thing, or maybe there's some text in the background of a particular video that you wanted to read. Um, kind of a neat feature, but again, a little bit gimmicky for my liking. Uh, moving on from there, you actually also have the option to scrub using your finger at any point in time, both in live play as well as pause. And as you can see there, it's um, moving along, which is pretty cool. And one other thing which is really neat, you can actually slide your finger up and down the left side and that'll actually adjust the brightness of the display as well to the point of what you like. Instead of having to back out and getting into the settings menu, how friggin' cool is that? That is super convenient. Now, while we've still got this up and running, we'll go ahead and restart it really quickly. And I want to show you another feature, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, this is the Q slide. Now, I think Q slide is actually quite a bit more useful than Samsung's pop up video play. The reason behind that is because not only can you, um, or not only, but because you can actually adjust the transparency of the video. So if for instance, you're typing a text message and you don't want this to be obtrusive um, and kind of distracting, you can actually turn the transparency down or perhaps you're reading an article for whatever reason, you like to multitask watching a video at the same time. Um, this way you're gonna be able to see through the video. I just think it's kind of a neat feature. I don't know how often I'd use it, probably never, but it's still a neat feature nevertheless. And it actually does also operate in in full on uh, land, uh, landscape mode as well, which is pretty darn cool as you can see there. Now some other neat features while you're um, watching a video, if you hit this button here, oh, I'm sorry, that was the uh, slide button, I'm sorry, we'll go ahead and <laughs> jump back into the gallery there, fail, uh, you go ahead and you've got some different um, uh, aspect ratio type fitting things. So you can go original size, best fit, and full screen. Uh, we also have the option to use our DLNA uh, software included in the device to share it with DLNA, uh, DLNA um, compatible devices such as TVs and media players and so on so that you can stream whatever's on your device right to the television, which is pretty cool. Now that actually brings us to Miracast. Uh, Miracast is an interesting new technology. Um, it's not on all 
TVs right now. However, it is coming out on more and more newer Samsung and LG TVs, and I can expect with LG and Samsung both using both using this technology, we could probably expect to see it come to some other device, uh, some other TV manufacturers down the road as well. Um, but what Miracast actually al uh, allows you to do is basically pretty much the same thing as um, wireless HDMI mirroring. Uh, so if you have a uh, Miracast compatible television, um, you'll be able to set that up right away. If you don't have a Miracast compatible television, don't worry. Head out, head on to Amazon, head on eBay, whatever, and you can actually purchase dongles that will plug right into the side of your TV and will give you that functionality right away. Um, that is a pretty cool feature. Now, although the camera application isn't up to snuff in terms of when we're looking at, let's say, compare the Galaxy S3 or the Note 2 with all of its crazy amounts of features for the amateur mobile photographer in you. However, the particular camera application that comes with the LG Optimus G is still quite impressive. And there's actually kind of a novelty, a fun aspect to it. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings here. Um, obviously, at the top left-hand corner, you'll notice we've got all of our, all of our um, quick menu settings. And these are actually also all editable, so you can swap them around if you like, remove them if you want, do whatever you want. Uh, but starting at the top here, we do have our little button to switch to the front-facing camera. Um, and this button here is actually uh, pretty cool. So it's talk to, ta to say, uh, uh, talk to take a photo. <laughs> so if we wanted to, we can do something like cheese. Okay, let's try that again. Cheese takes a picture. We can take, uh, say, whiskey. Whiskey. It usually works a lot better than that. I think it might be because my finger was covering the microphone hole. Nevertheless, uh, still a pretty cool feature. A couple of other commands you can say to um, have the picture take for you. Um, if you are around small children, one of the other commands is whiskey. I don't recommend you having a six-year-old child saying whiskey in order to take a picture. That would seem kind of awkward in a public situation. Uh, we also have this one is pretty cool, time catch shot. So what this will actually allow you to do is, well, it, it's, it doesn't allow you to do anything. You're allowing the camera, the uh, device to do it for you. But just before you press that shutter button, it'll actually take several photos before, so right now what it's doing is actually taking photos and caching them, so that when I do uh, take a picture, what it's going to do is take a few seconds here to render those pictures that were just taken. Go ahead and click the little icon there and you'll notice the picture starting to pop up. So say for instance somebody, um, you said cheese and somebody was just closing their left eye and they looked all lazy eyed and that was a terrible picture. Go ahead, don't worry, uh, head on back to uh, this particular function here and you can actually, you might get lucky and find a picture where everyone was smiling and had all their eyes open at the exact same time, um, basically eliminating the possible need to retake the photo all over again, which is a really cool feature. Moving on from there, we also have a bunch of other um, settings uh, options. You can change the brightness, focus, image size, scene, ISO, white balance, color effect, timer, geotagging, shutter sound for perv mode, reset, and some camera help stuff. Uh, but we'll go ahead and switch on over to the video function. This is where some of the fun comes in. Um, so you've got FHD, which is full HD. Uh, you can go all the way down to a measly MMS or QCI F uh, 176 by 144 for uh, MMS messages to keep it nice and small to uh, prevent consumption of data, obviously. Um, but we've also got this really funny feature here, silly faces. Now I'm not gonna show you on camera now because it was actually really difficult for the front facing camera to detect my face behind the camera. I've already tried it. Yes, this is my second take of this particular uh, part of the video. Um, but you've got big mouth and it actually uses software, video software in there to make it look like you've got a massive mouth. It'll warp your mouth and make it look hilarious. And that's while you're recording a video, not just a picture, it's while you're recording the video. It's all live, as well as big eyes, small mouth, big nose, small eyes, and squeeze. I actually tried big nose because I have a large nose and that made me look even more ridiculous than I already do now. You've also got some cool different backgrounds that you can choose from. Disco, in space, sunset, my video. So pretty, pretty cool stuff there. I was really impressed to see all the different options that you do have. And of course, going into the settings menu, we've got a lot of the similar um, options as well as uh, audio recording settings, which is always fun to mess around with. And of course, as I would have expected, gaming on this device has been absolutely fantastic. Um, that IPS True HD Plus display 
with its 320 uh, PPI pixel density and that 1280 by 768 resolution display is absolutely phenomenal. I can't say enough good things about it with gaming. Um, if you are a huge fan of gaming, especially first person shooters with high 3D rendering going on, um, this is definitely a display and a device for you. You know, you got the quad, uh, the quad core processor, you've got two gigs of RAM. Um, there is absolutely zero lag you will ever notice on this on this phone while you're playing some pretty high resource intensive games such as Dead Trigger, Nova 3 and so on. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. The colors are just so impressive. They just pop out like you wouldn't believe. I can't I can't say enough good things about it. If you're a huge fan of gaming, this is definitely definitely um, or should be a consideration for you uh, for your next device. Now, my web browsing experience on the LG Optimus G has been satisfactory at best. Um, I've noticed very, very slow load times. As you can see here, we are using 4G, and um, it's still actually loading the page, and I've already started the load about, mm, I don't know, 10 seconds before I started this clip. But what I will say is because of that display, yet again, going back to the display, web browsing is just absolutely fantastic. Um, because of that RGB subpixel matrix, um, we've got some amazing quality text. It's crisp. It's clear. You can see tiny text from far away. And, um, you know, once the page actually loads up, the pinch to zoom feature is actually very quick. As you can see, there is a little bit of stuttering going on there. But as soon as that uh, processor starts to scale up, it really kicks in and kind of pushes through the meat of it, um, giving us this um, really fluid uh, browsing experience, even though, as you can see there, the web page is actually still loading. Um, the browser that comes with it is kind of neat. You've got some different kind of cool settings down here uh, that you could play around with. Although, if I were you, I do recommend going with a third-party um, uh, browser such as Dolphin or Chrome, which it actually does come stock with if you do decide to use Chrome, which is always a nice feature so you don't have to spend the actual five seconds of downloading it yourself. So overall, guys, my opinion of the device has been, well, very, very pleasant. Um, aside from the web browsing experience, everything else on this phone has really, really met my expectations and actually far surpassed it. If the Nexus 4, which I'm going to be picking up tomorrow, or at least purchasing tomorrow, is anything like this, I will be one happy camper. You got a device that has arguably one of the best displays on the market to date. You got some of the highest end specs in a smartphone to date. Um, you've got a company that has really come up and is trying to prove itself by releasing devices of build quality as of recently, that being the LG Optimus G and the Nexus 4 that are just so compatible and or better um, and not compatible, comparable or better than many of the other devices on the market right now. The build quality on this device, although it does have non-removable battery and a non-expandable um, storage, um, the unibody design actually adds to the solidness of the of the actual device itself. It is just a very solid, um, premium feeling device, and you'll get that feeling right away the second you open it up. Hitting that wake button. Um, it, it, it wakes up just so quickly. That lock screen is just so smooth. And the animations they use, they really put a lot of time and effort, I think, into it. And they did a really, really fantastic job marrying a quad-core processor with two gigs of RAM and not oversaturating the UI with a bunch of useless crap that you will probably never, ever use. I found a lot of the function of this device useful, although I may not use all of them all the time. They're still there, and they're definitely functions that I will probably use in the future. Um, the camera on this thing has definitely been adequate. It's got extremely fast exposure transition from light situations to darker situations. Instead of waiting for that transition period to fade, um, it is very, very snappy. The device has been so quick. Um, no lag whatsoever in any single situation I've ever come across whatsoever with the exception of the web browsing that I already showed you guys. Uh, very, very impressive. Um, overall, I would give this phone a, I don't know, 9 out of 10. Um, other than comparing it to the Nexus 4 in terms of price points, this is definitely a device you should consider for your next purchase. Purchase. Purchase? Purchase. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. This has been our review of the Rogers LG Optimus G. And that's it, folks. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Oh, and one more thing before we go, because I know I don't know, I don't think I've actually covered this yet, and I know I'm going to be asked in the comments. Um, battery life on this thing has actually been adequate. Cell standby mode, um, this thing will last you forever. Uh, before I started the video and did a couple of different takes, 
we started out at about 40% and that was after a day and 21 hours of usage. Light usage, but usage nevertheless. Um, when you do start getting into high intensive like 3D and resource intensive type games, um, at about half an hour of gaming, you will probably drain your battery 20 to 30% at least, uh, which was really disappointing to see. But other than that, um, if you're not using it for crazy stuff like gaming and video streaming, I think that you should be more than okay, more than okay, and this should definitely last you over a day. Uh, heavy usage, you're probably looking at about 10 to 12 hours, but if you're doing light to moderate usage, at least a day's worth of usage out of it. Anyways, guys, thanks again. Bye-bye.